Well, it kind of works. Welcome to another episode. Before we get into the meat of this episode, I just want to mention that um, I was at the Barsi Summer Bash a couple weeks ago, which was a lot of fun. Got to meet a bunch of YouTube creators and uh, a bunch of uh, viewers, not my viewers necessarily. I did meet a few of my viewers like John and Philip. It's great to see you guys. Uh, and as part of that, I decided it was finally time for me to get a logo for my channel, which you can see right here. And I finally got stickers as well. It's the first time I've done that. And I thought it would be fun to get a t-shirt, as you can see here, that had my logo on it. Uh, so I could wear that at the bash. So that was pretty fun. Let's get to this right now. So this is uh, working on the electronic lead screw conversion for my MCO Maximat 7. This is using the ELS4 basic that I've described in previous episodes. And I have things cobbled together here a little bit just so I can test things. So let me tell you what it is that I'm uh, trying to do and then go through the process of getting it to the point where it is today. This is a uh, fairly crude model of the lathe itself. You can see here this is the end and this is as much as I modeled of the lead screw. It's enough though so I can get an idea of how the, the pulleys and the belt fit together. And then it allowed me to create this uh, 3D printed part here that will hold the stepper motor in the correct place. And the idea is that I've got it held with the four screws plus its weight is held on the end by this extension here. And that it will be held to my pan via two really strong magnets and also a little bit of rubber underneath so that it doesn't slide along the metal. So I'm going to 3D print this, wire everything up and then give this a try. I'm going to start by uh, wiring up the power supply. I have this uh, power cable and so first I need to strip these back a little bit. I'm planning to put some uh, ferrules on the end of this. I think I can uh, fit the ferrules into there. And the nice thing about the ferrules is that they will keep the individual strands from coming out and uh, this should uh, do a nice job of keeping things a little bit neater. So I have these, this box of ferrules that I bought from eBay and I'll put the link below. One of the things that I did is I put the, the size of the wires on here. I don't know what size this is, but I'm going to start with uh, you know, 14 gauge and mm, I don't think it's going to work. Well, yeah, I think 14 gauge will work. Yep. Let me try. 16 gauge, I don't think that's going to work, but I want to go down. Well, that does work. And, uh, okay, so I'll start with the smaller size. I'll grab three of those. And I like to twist these a little bit just to, to keep uh, all of them in line. And then I've got this uh, nice crimping tool, specifically for the ferrules. You just push it in all the way, and then uh, it does a great job. It's just so easy. Okay. So those are all three crimped and that means that these are staying on there, they're not coming out. I had to look it up online and what I found out is that uh, black is hot, the white is neutral and the green is ground. So here's the ground, neutral and line. Okay, so I said ground is green. So that goes into there. I'm definitely liking uh, using ferrules, that uh, crimp ferrules. That makes it really nice. So I'll make sure these are tight. I've got this plugged into an outlet, but I haven't turned the outlet on. So one of the things that I've noticed is I'm going to want to put a uh, power switch on here with a fuse. 
actually I can do that with power strip. So I'll turn the power strip on and I don't see anything happening with lights or anything else but let's see if we've got uh, some voltage on here. I swapped out the 48 volt power supply for a 12 volt power supply that I had which does not have the protection uh, for the, the lines here. But if I take a look at uh, V minus to V plus, you can see I'm getting 12 volts, which is what I should. So this will work okay for initial testing, but it's not going to provide the same torque from the stepper motors that I would get with a 48 volt power supply. You want to go as high as you can, you can go for the voltage supported by the stepper driver and the stepper motor. Uh, in this case, 48 volts would work great, but as I say, this is all I had lying around, so this is what I'm going to use. Next up is the extension cable for the stepper uh, motor. Now, the manual doesn't say uh, anything about this extension, and so it doesn't say anything about the colors. So what that means is I'm going to have to look in here and figure out which is pin number one. Okay, so there's a key right there, and then pin number one, I believe, is this pin right here. So what I'm going to have to do is switch this to the beeper mode so that uh, I can figure out which pin is which. Alright, so if I... this is always fun. So I'm going to hold it on here, and then try to see which of these uh, wires it is. Okay, so it looks like uh, one pin one is black. So I said pin one is black, pin two is blue, okay, and pin three is over here. So it's going to be green or white. Let me start this part. Okay, pin three is green. Machine pin four is white. Okay, then what I have is I have the stepper driver, uh, or it's a uh, stepper servo driver. So this has both uh, encoder input as well as output uh, to the stepper motor. So we're going to be wanting to wire these up here. Again, I'm going to use the ferrules. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give up on the solder part and uh, cut these uh, short and then strip them again. So I'll go ahead and cut this off, strip off the right amount, And then see if I can go with the 18 at this point. We twist those together so they stay together. Yep. I can feel that that's just about the right fit um, because it doesn't go on. I mean, I can feel resistance. So I'll go ahead and uh, crimp this one. and then I'll do all the others. All right, now what I want to do is hook it up to here. Okay, so that's everything that I need in here except for V plus and V minus, uh, which will come from the power supply. I think I've been looking at this wrong. So I need to uh, redo the pins. So pin one is this one right here. And I was looking at, uh, this is the, the female end and I was looking at the, the male end. So that means pin one is going to be over here, which I had as pin four. So I'm gonna have to basically renumber this diagram by going around the opposite way. So this becomes one, two, I'm going to do it over here. One, two, three, and four. So I need to swap these around with a new numbering, which I'll do off camera. Looking at the, uh, looking at the cable for the stepper motor, uh, again, I have to do the same thing. So they have uh, pin number one is here, and then it goes around. It uh, looks like all of the pins that I need are on the outside. Yeah, so it's basically one, two, three right there. And then it's 
11, 12, 13. So let me try to track those down on this cable and then I'm going to get that wired up. But I'm going to start by putting the ferrules on, on here. Okay, now I need to figure out what's what. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll wire this up. Okay, I have those wired up as needed. Uh, next thing I need to do is wire up the power supply itself. The, what should be 48 but is actually 12 at the moment and then these need to come from the ELS4 basic. Now that doesn't look right. Let's see that's uh, three flashes. Alright let's take a look. Uh, you can see down here it says for alarm we have uh, three times is under voltage. And if we look down here you can see that the voltage range is 24 to 50 volts. Obviously I didn't look at that before I hooked it up. Since I'm using 12 volts it's pretty clear why I'm getting that alarm. I have this hooked up now to a 24 volt power supply so it should work. You can see that the, the green light is on so that's good. The red light is off. I'll turn this on and then set this to Z and I can move the the stepper motor but it's going too slow so for example if I go 22 millimeters that this is definitely not turning it uh, far enough to go 22 millimeters so if I look at the micro switches here they're all turned off if they're all off it's 40,000 steps what I want to do is set it to 1,000 pulses per revolution so that means that SW5 through 7 need to be turned on so that is C5, six, and seven. So now it should be set to a thousand steps per revolution. So if I try it again, you can see the motor definitely moves a lot faster. But is it correct? Okay, well the next thing is to go into the settings. And if I go to Three, it's Z motor setup and down here you can see it's uh, 400 pulses per rev revolution so I'll change that to a thousand which is what I set the dip switches to and now that looks about right the next question is going to be to set the the spindle pitch which is how many millimeters per unit and I believe that's per step I'm going to look it up and do some calculations and figure out what number I need to put in there for that setting. But at least now I've got it working. I wanted to test all of this on my bench before trying it on the lathe because it's a lot easier to look things up on my computer on the bench here, try things out, it's more comfortable in here. And then once I have everything working, which I, I pretty much do now, then I can take it out to my shop and put it on the lathe and see how it works. I have everything uh, hooked up now and I've got this set to gearbox mode. So when I turn this it should turn the hybrid stepper motor. And one of the things that I've discovered as you can see here is that this 3D printed uh, connection is just not strong enough so it moves back and forth as I'm rotating the, the chuck. So it does work though as you can see if I hold this in place. So what's clear about this is I'm going to need to have a much sturdier mount here. I'm probably going to want to use uh, something made out of aluminum that's screwed into the casting on the end of the lathe itself. So I'm going to focus on that next episode. So I made good progress, but obviously I have to do some more work on the mounting for the hybrid stepper motor for the lead screw. The forces that are involved were higher than I, I realized they would be. So I need to have a much more rigid mount and so that means I need to figure out the geometry uh, that's going to be required for an aluminum mount 
and the aluminum mount is going to need to be two pieces so that I can slide them back and forth and or pivot them to adjust the, the belt tension. I'm going to be doing that in a future episode because it's going to take quite a bit of thinking and trial and error to figure out what the mounting is going to look like. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and if you're a subscriber, you might want to hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button to ensure that you're notified when I have new videos. See you next time.